some of the angry protests that we've seen at Donald Trump rallies in recent weeks really boiled over last night in Chicago. Some this morning are pointing to Trump's own comments as the spark that lit the fuse. We've gone back and put together a series of comments from Trump at various rallies since February. These are in chronological order. Take a listen. If you see somebody getting ready to throw a tomato, knock the crap out of them, would you? Seriously. Okay, just knock the hell. I promise you, I will pay for the legal fees, I promise. I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. That's true. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. In the good old days, they'd rip him out of that seat so fast. But today, everybody's politically correct. Our country's going to hell with being politically correct. Going to hell. All right, get him out of here, please. Get him out. Get him out. Are you from Mexico? Are you from Mexico? Huh? Are you from Mexico? Get out of here. Get out. Out! Donald Trump, in his own words, let's bring in political analyst Sean Pittman and Steve Litz, who's a political reporter for our WTVJ affiliate here in Miami. Thanks so much for being with Thanks us, for us, both of you, on a Saturday morning. Um, let me start, Sean, let me start with you. How much of what we're seeing do you think is driven by Donald Trump's rhetoric? Well, I mean, I don't want to oversimplify it, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and let's talk about talk about the things that we're pretending not to know here right we're pretending not to know that we're in America and it's difficult to be in America because we have something Steve called the First Amendment that tells you that I could say something at the top of my voice that you might loathe and you can say something at the top of your voice voice that I might loathe Donald Trump has a right to the First Amendment as well but here's the thing what is this responsibility for that right Here's where he has to show us whether he's presidential or not, right? He's shown us that he can anger people. I mean, people out of high school can't get the same jobs they used to get. They mm -hmm. can't uh, support their families. They can't send their kids to college. They're angry about that. So what's his responsibility for that? Can he, can he bring those people down and make them, feel, make them feel comfortable? I mean, I think that's where we are right now. And the, and the other thing that we have to really consider is if he can get a crowd of people like that, Steve, if he can make a crowd of people like that angry enough that they're willing to fight, what will he do to the countries that hate the United States if he's president of the United States? Will they decide that they just want to fight? He's a tough guy. And people are responding to that. Mm. But what's his responsibility for that, Kate? Steve, you've been you've covered Donald Trump here in Florida, and you shot some video a few months back at a Trump rally right. at his resort in Doral, Florida. Yeah. We can show some of that. Donald Trump frequently says that protesters were the ones throwing punches, that they're the ones sort of who started it. I was at a, a rally in Las Vegas, where the one where he famously said, punch him in the face. And he said that that man had been throwing punches. I have to tell you, I didn't, maybe I missed it, but I didn't see that man throwing any punches. Yeah. Uh, I guess I just wonder where the truth is in all of this. It, it does seem like he's... He's sort of making things up about the protesters. Okay, so, yep, you're right. I haven't seen protesters throwing any punches. You see them stand up um, and, and, and they, yell, they hold as, signs. As, as Sean says. Sure, they, they'll hold some signs and then, the, the, and then they're pounced on. Last night when all of this was unfolding on TV, live TV, Donald Trump called in uh, to a couple of different networks and he talked about the, the anger. People are concerned about jobs. They're concerned about the economy. They don't like the state of politics. I think what you're seeing at these rallies, that's not people who are angry about politics and jobs. Those are people who are angry at the sight of protesters. Their blood boils and they want to do something about it. And so they resort to violence. So yes, the country is angry and people are frustrated with what's going on. But frustration and violence at these rallies, I think that's a different thing. How does all of this impact Florida? I mean, we're sitting here in Miami. We got a huge vote here on Tuesday. It's make or break for Marco Rubio, really. And we just heard him so frustrated and saying he's not even sure he can support Donald Trump if he's the eventual nominee. Well, Florida is obviously important, and you see some uh, some some games going on that aren't a part of the original script, right? I mean, you see people campaigning in Florida who don't have a chance at winning. Ted Cruz. You see people, exactly. You, ha you see people attacking other candidates who don't have a chance at winning in Florida. So there's some things going on here, some outlining things that aren't being talked about. Well, listen. If Donald, if Rubio doesn't win Florida, it's unfortunate for him. There's been a lot of votes cast early, 
And you would think that that helps Marco Rubio, Steve, but it might hurt him because how many of those votes are for Jeb Bush? You, you wonder how these um, optics are going to translate when it comes to, to Tuesday. And certainly of Trump supporters who have made up their minds and they are loyalists. But some Republican voters out there who see what's going on, they don't want to have anything, any part to do with that, almost embarrassed at what they're seeing. Mm. So I've been covering the news a long time, right? Covering politics a long time. I've sat in feed bays and I've watched video come in from other parts of the world. It looks like that. And when you see something like that, you wonder, that's America? How does, how does something like that happen in America? And you wonder how all of this impacts, like you, as you say, the voter who's going to walk into that booth on Tuesday night and make a decision. Maybe, maybe they do side with Marco Rubio because they liked what they heard him say this morning, or maybe they stick with Donald Trump. And when we heard Mr. Rubio talk this morning, throughout this process, we've heard these Republican nominees talk about, I'm going to vote for the Republican nominee. That was not what Mr. Rubio said this morning. It was the right. first crack. Uh, it was the first crack we've heard from one of these nominees who may not be supporting the Republican nominee if, in fact, it's Donald Trump. So good to have you guys with us, Sean Pittman and Great to Steve Litz. Thanks Thank so for much for, for being here on a Saturday morning. Sure. Go get Great. some some a cafecito some, or right? something, <laughs> right? We